Welcome to Steve Reads Bible Stories. Reverend Steve Janes reads Bible stories while pointing out keys and principles on how to read the Bible. Hi, my name is Steve Janes, and this is the More Abundant Life Podcast. This is episode number 316 in the giving and receiving. We're looking at the book of Malachi today. In this session, we're going to look at the book of Malachi, which was written about 500 years before the arrival of Jesus Christ. Let's give a listen. Well, God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, we're on the session on giving and receiving that we're dealing with Malachi. And this is the last teaching in the teaching series from the Old Testament. But as a prelogue or to give you a little run and start here, I'd like to let you know that when I taught in uh, how to read the Bible for understanding and power, I taught on the keys and how the Bible interprets itself. And in this section, where I teach on in the verse, in the context, where it's been used before, I pointed out a very valid, important key to understanding the scriptures is to read the the context. And sometimes you'd have to read the entire context to know what the scriptures were talking about. And sometimes you would even have to read the entire book in which the scriptures were written in to get a good scope and understanding of what was going on. And the book of Malachi is one of those books that you should just read the entire book to get the the full understanding of scope of what was going on at that period of time and what God was revealing to Malachi some 500 years before Jesus Christ arrived. And to get started with this teaching, I'd like you to take your Bibles and go to Malachi and go to Malachi chapter one. And we're going to start in verse six. And it says, a son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be your father, where's my honor? And I be, if I be a master, Where is my fear, saith the Lord Jehovah of hosts, unto you, O priests, that despise my name? And ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? See here, God is talking to Malachi, and Malachi wrote this down, and he's saying, Hey, you know, a son honors his father, a master honors his I mean, a servant honors his master, but where's God getting his honor from? Where's he getting his from? And verse 7 says, Ye offer polluted bread upon my altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. You know, they don't have any real regard for God's table, for the, for the, for the, uh, offerings that they're putting on God's table. Verse 8 goes on to say, And if ye offer blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto the governor. Will he ex- be pleased with thee or accept thy person? Hey, hand it to someone else. Hand it to the governor. See if he likes to get Second rate stuff, saith the Lord of hosts. See, what they were doing, they were giving second rate offerings and calling it first rate offerings. They were giving God the lame and the sick and the weak and not giving God the best. And God always deserves the best. And he is saying, this is what you're doing. This is how you're living your life. This is the way you minister to me, God. Pretty shabby. Mm -hmm. Go to chapter 2 
And in verse 1, he continues here and says, And now, ye priests, this commandment is for you. In other words, hey, priest, listen up. This is for you. This is for you. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because ye do not lay it to your what? To your heart. You're not given according to your heart, and God's not getting any glory. He says, listen, you priest, you're not giving me any glory, God. You know, and because of this, you are cursed. You are cursed. You look at verse 3. It says, behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. You're going to have this solemn feast and it won't be worth much. It'll be dung in it. Verse 4, And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my commandment, no, my covenant, might be with Levi, said the Lord of hosts. He says, My covenant is with Levi. My covenant was with him of life and peace. And I gave them to him for the fear with, wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. He, this is talking about he gave God honor and glory. You know, the truth, the law of truth was in his mouth and the iniquity was not found in his lips. He always praised God. He walked with me in peace and equity and did turn many away from iniquity. For the priest lips should have kept the knowledge. And that's talking about teaching. The priest should have kept teaching the knowledge of God, but they didn't. And they would not seek the law at his mouth. They didn't want to hear the word of God anymore. That's what it's saying. What? They should seek the law out of his mouth, but they weren't. Right. But they weren't. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. He is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. The priest should speak for God, be messengers for God, should teach God's word. They should keep the integrity and the accuracy of God's word first and foremost on their minds. Verse 8 says, But they departed out of the way and have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupt the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. They corrupted the true word of God so that people were not getting the blessings that they should have got. They were not being taught the rightly divided word. And let's go to Malachi uh, we are in chapter 3, verse 1. They were supposed to be the messengers for God. They were supposed to help the people. But instead, they weren't. They were not teaching them the rightly divided word. They were not teaching them the word so they could live abundantly. They were just using them and despising God and not giving God the glory. Chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, said the Lord of hosts. He's going to send a messenger before the Lord. This sounds a lot like, John the Baptist to me. It really does. You know, he's going to send the messenger and he's going to talk about the Lord that's going to come. Verse 2, but who may who but who may abide 
in the days of his coming? It's a question. Who's going to be around to abide when he comes? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. He shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord a offering in righteousness, that they would offer something in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old when they were God was blessing them and they were blessing God. And that virtuous blessing cycle was going on. And as for the former years when that was going on. Verse 5, it says, I will come near to you to judgment and I will be swift, be a swift witness against the sorcerers against the adulterers, against the false swearers, against those that oppress the hirelings in his wage, the widows and the fatherless, that turn aside the stranger from the right. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. See, we are to give honor to God. The reason that we give of our increase and our substances to God is because he deserves the glory. And he's the one that furnishes it from the beginning. He made it available for us. Verse six says, for I am the Lord. I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. He says that you guys should be consumed. Mm -hmm. You are not doing anything that I've asked you to do, you know. But I haven't changed. I still love you. You can still turn and come back to me, God, is what he's saying. Verse 7, even from the days of your father, ye have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, God says, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye say, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, by the way. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. But he says here, there's a way out. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. God says, prove me, prove me. You know, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be enough room to receive it. In the Old Testament, in the very first teaching, I showed you that Abraham was blessed. And the first thing that happened was Melchizedek came and blessed Abraham, who returned from the slaughter. And then Abram uh, blessed Melchizedek. It started out with the blessing. God makes it available for us, and then we get blessed. We... Bless God. God blesses his ministers. His ministers teach us the word and do the work and the service for us. And then we get blessed. And then while we're getting blessed, we get an increase and we give it back to God. It's a circle that keeps running around and it's pretty cool. And it's all because God has made it all available for us. And it says here, it says, I will open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be enough room to receive it. I'm not done. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall, shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. 
things are just going to work out fine. You're going to get your increase. You're going to be blessed. You know? And then uh, verse uh, 12 says, And all nations shall call you lucky. No. Blessed. I, I hate it when people say, we well, are lucky. You know, I'm not lucky. I'm blessed. I'm blessed because God blesses me. And because I'm blessed, then I can continue to bless God. I bless God. I bless God with my increase. You know, so that the work of God can be done wherever and however it needs to be done. It says here, it says, and all nations shall call you blessed. And if they say you're lucky, I'm going to say, no, I'm blessed. For ye shall be a dis delightful some land. Our homes, our places that we live there, delightful. They're delightful. Seth, the Lord of hosts. God has made all this available that we could see in the, the Old Testament records. And next week, I'm going to start to get into the records in the gospel, and we're going to look at the heart of Jesus Christ. What was Jesus Christ's heart when it came to giving and receiving? We're going to look at the verses that teach us and show us that. But just as a, like a little review I just want to go over with you some of the things that I've learned personally as we went through this teaching series through the Old Testament on giving and receiving. And it all started with blessings. First, God blesses us, making it available for us to live prosperously. God has given us this world, this this uh, life that has lots of ways to be blessed, lots of ways to be prosperous. God has given us his word so that we can know the keys and answers to live that more abundant life. We can learn about Jesus Christ who came to make life uh, wonderful, but more than abundant. It's just one of the God makes all that available. And then we bless God and then God blesses the ministers and other workers of God. And then they bless us. And then we bless God with our increase. It's a virtuous cycle of blessing. I could see that through the Old Testament records. And when the Old Testament believers had the right heart for God, their whole life was focused on God. God was their reason for their existence because he gave them a blessed life. If you really want to be blessed and be happy, then focus in on God. In the Old Testament records, God set a way for all this to be done. You know, that they would give, you know, tithes and offerings to the house of God for the work of God. And then the people had a heart to give the blessings continued on. You could see that through the Old Testament records. The tithes and offerings were to be holy, set apart, consecrated, and sanctified. It made me more conscious about separating my given to God money from any other money. The money that went to God and the offerings that I was going to give to God personally was to be set apart. You know, set apart, consecrated, sanctified. And then, there it is, to God. The given to the ministers and to the working, workers in the house of God encouraged them to do their best for God. See, when they received the tithes and offering, they were encouraged to do more for God. They were encouraged that what they were doing was accepted of God and the people that gave it. And they were encouraged to be good workers for God. When the children of Israel were swayed from the commandments of God, 
men of God like David, Hezekiah, Nehemiah, Ezra taught the word of God and they taught it so they could understand the words of God and do them and perform them. In the Old Testament, they were told to get rid of their other gods, you know, statues and groves and things like that. Today, we set our affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. We want God to be our number one focus. And when we do that, then it's easy to give because we are getting so blessed. Part of the workers of God were faithful men who were in charge of the distributing to the needs of the house of God. They were faithful men put in charge of chambers and resources, and they made sure that the resources went to the right places. They were faithful men. And I know that this is Old Testament stuff, and it's not written directly to us, but it is for our learning. And it is for our learning. And now, when we get into the gospel period, we're going to see what Jesus Christ's heart was towards giving and receiving. And I can't wait to show you what our responsibility is in the giving and receiving when we get to the church epistles. Well, God bless you. Have a great week. And we'll get back into it next week. Amen and amen. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com. While there, sign up for our newsletter. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on How to Read the Bible for Understanding and Power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless Word.